What is up Madden gamers? Welcome to today's video. Today we have a full live online gameplay and we're going to be talking about our 46 defensive scheme. Uh, real quick starting off we're going to switch our package to the speed package by flicking the right analog stick to the right. Come out in our base play the cover three. And I'm just going to get started with some basic inverted cover two. If I can get on my guy. And we're just going to get started with some basic stuff. Notice on the outside, he has Donnie Avery on the left. And I'm all over that post route. Dak gone. So four verticals right off the bat. Uh, pretty pretty popular play. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my 4-6 bear package up. Um, so that if I ever want to come out of the speed package, I can come out of 4-6 bear audible to 4-6. Uh, so that I don't miss out on the speed when I want the speed because if you know anything about uh, substituting manually when you're facing packages a lot of times and we got a little screen here again the cover three does a really decent job at containing the screen uh, it doesn't actually get, you know super roid up stop it but it does do a decent job of containing it so here what you see I'm doing here is I'm gonna set up a big package in this 46 so I'm gonna put uh, Hicks in there. I'm gonna put my my beefy guys in there. So if I ever need to check down to that I can come out in that and just basically set it up for run defense If I feel like this guy's just gonna pound me all game long But uh, here we're gonna run jam uh, jam cam Jamar Charles uh, Let's see if he can prove to me that he's one of the best backs in the game I mean, he's a good back, but I don't think he is I don't think he's elite status and that's just me But uh, some people do some people don't and there you see the there's that four six cover three and well, that's all we're in right now and for the first drive of the game I'm probably gonna sit in that cover three the entire drive because I feel that confident now there are times where I don't feel that confident about my defense there are times you know where I might check down to something if I if I'm running like three four over I'm gonna run stink pin zone probably the majority of the first drive that's a zone blitz that's my zone blitz from three four over it's not gonna be my base play but as and that's a little cheesy there but we got stopped. Uh, but anywho, uh, so getting into the offense here, we love to come out in the shotgun normal, uh, wing New York or wing Pats, um, and we're gonna play Giant Slot Trail, and uh, let's see if we can get some stuff going here. So we're just gonna come out, run the base setup here, let's see what he's got. Uh, so you see how we have a linebacker on Lance Moore. This is a quick tell that he's base aligned, uh, so I can motion Lance Moore over and I shouldn't be followed. So you see that right there? That's a quick tell. So now I'm going to audible into my zone beater, the shotgun trips tight end. I can find it here. There it is. So I'm going to go to the X spot here really quick. i got to hurry. I'm going to put Sproles on a streak, and I'm going to put Kenny Steele's on in route. I don't have time to make any other hot routes. Uh, he actually went to man coverage, and this corner route, uh, Lance Moore's just going to end up dropping it. But you see, that's the thing, too, is when they're in a baseline set, it still gave me an advantage to go to that trips tight end um, because it put a linebacker on Lance Moore. Lance Moore should be able to get that. Here I get that same look, so I'm going to check down to my comeback Z post play, motion Colston across. Here he's going to follow me, so now I have a, a better tell that it's man or zone. So now I'm going to check down to my man beater from the gun U trips, and I'm going to run the play giant slot wheel. And now I'm going to put Sproles on a streak, Graham on an in, and Steele's on a smart run in route. Graham on that zig. I'd rather have a zig than an in. And we're going to get going here. And you see he's in man again, so I'm going to hit Marcus Colson on that wheel route and uh, get a quick little man feed there to the outside. Uh, here I'm going to quick snap this halfback base. Uh, because he's got that linebacker on more, I know I can motion more across and snap him in the A-gap, and I'm going to get the advantage numbers-wise. And uh, there they just, uh, Jamar Houston just block shedded. Uh, so here, I'm going to check down to that deep end really quick because I really like this play in clutch situations. And uh, put Darren Sproles on that in route. And Darren Sproles is going to get wide open over the middle for a quick hit. And that's why I love that play so much. And as you see with the offense, I haven't even ran the base play yet because I've just kind of been trying to fill out what he's doing. It's just mainly a lot of two men under, but he's not base aligning it. But you see how that linebacker is going to be matched up on that guy. So here, two men under, I see that his user players on the halfback. So I'm going to check down my third read there, Jimmy Graham over the 
on that right edge. You guys got to identify the user player. If you're not doing that, you are going to have a lot of trouble. So here you see he switched things up. You see how that safety shifted over? So now that's a quick tell that he's probably in a blitz. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mo I'm going to audible to a play that's not giant slot trail. So come back Z post. I'm going to motion more across, see if they follow. You see that he does follow him here. So now I'm going to check down into gun empty giant because what that tells me is it tells me that those linebackers are not covering anybody. They're probably blitzing. So it's a good wise decision to check down to my blitz beater here and try to beat the pressure. And here you see that linebacker blitzes off that edge, and I got Jimmy Graham to the flat for a quick first down. That is what I'm talking about in the videos, and that's what you have to do, what I'm telling you to do, because it is effective and it works. I'm not trying to, you know, just blow your blow smoke up your head, but I'm just trying to emphasize over and over again, guys, you have to follow it. You see, once again, he's in that same look. So now again, now you see he audibles out of it. So now I'm going to check to the shotgun trips tight end because this linebacker on the left did not come over. I'm going to put the bubble screen out and see what he looks like. So you see how he follows over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check down to X spot. And I know I have somewhat ability to beat man coverage. And so I'm going to try to do that as well. But here you see there's a zone coverage and there's that little in route underneath against zone. Uh, does very effective at beating zone coverage. So see guys, I haven't even hardly ran my base play yet, but I'm still moving the ball effectively and I'm still getting a read on what he's doing because the base play is more than just a play. It gives me a read off of what he's doing. Here he's going to give me the outside. Darren Sproles is going to scamper for a quick four-yard gain. I love going no huddle because it keeps him in the same defense, forces him to adjust to me because my playbook, if I'm coming out in the same play every time, I always have that advantage. Here you see Tom Bahali is split out over Lance Moore, so I feel confident to hit that route against two men under, and I'm actually going to maybe get in for a really nice gain there. Check down first and goal. Now, this is where you want a quick snap in a situation like this, so I'm looking for that single back bunch. I go down to the check down to the single back normal, uh, put that zero one trap in your audibles. It's very effective, and I'm going to try to get a quick hit, end up not making it here. So now what you're going to see is I'm going to be a little more conventional. He's actually going to force a call a timeout. Now, that's another reason why you go no huddle. When you have all of your plays in your playbook, that you have your audible set up, you have the ability to do that. And he just wasted a timeout because of the speed of my offense, the, the smooth uh, reads that was happening, and he saw that I was going to quick snap something else, and he was worried, and so he has to audible. Or he has to call timeout. So now you see the situation here. Uh, I really like this advantage. They've got linebackers matched up against my wide receivers. So I'm going to go ahead and run the giant slot trail, and I'm going to hit Pierre Thomas for a touchdown. So you see, hopefully you saw a little bit of that drive, uh, what I plan on doing uh, with the system, with the offense, what the reads are kind of looking like. You want to identify who's on who. Even if they're not base aligned, you still want to identify your matchups because a guy like Tom Bahali is not going to be able to cover Lance Moore, but maybe a guy like Dunta Robinson is not going to be able to stop the run as well as Tom Hawley. So it's a trade-off, but there's always an advantage when you're in a formation like this, and it's up to you to figure that out. Once again, you see I got those linebackers we cover Last time he usered that guy, so I'm going to check down to Jimmy Graham. And Jimmy Graham, one of the best catching traffic tight ends, drops one over the middle. That's just what it is. But you see the tendencies that I'm reading. You see the formation that I'm reading. And that is what I'm basing my play calling off of. Because you cannot decide if it's man and zone this season, you have to base it off of tendencies. You have to base it off of where they have their players. And you have to base it off of what puts your team in the best position to get positive yards. So I hope that you guys are paying attention to that. On uh, defense, I'm making everything look the same so that he can't identify man zone, etc. I always base a line. I always spread my line every single time because it's a uniform uh, personnel. So the cover three did a really nice job uh, first time here. He's probably going to run the ball here. Um, I like to pass him against the run. I just, for whatever reason, I think it does a little bit better. Uh, you see how that user blows up the run. And, and again, we talk about this all the time. You don't necessarily have to be in a run defense to contain the run. You do have to be in a run defense this year more than any other year to actually stop the run. But in order to simply contain it, you need to be in the inverted cover three, which is universal to every playbook and every system. And there you see the cover three doing a very nice job at having people in positions to make plays on the football. Now what you're going to see is I'm going to check down because I haven't done it yet. I'm going to check down to that cover three blitz off the edge. So make sure you're watching for that. So here we go. We got the play set up. 
watch out for the drag over to the right side. And they, we should see pressure off that left edge, at least some type of pressure. And now we got a quarterback draw. I don't know. I think he actually made a mistake there because he was trying to drop back and, and pass. So uh, it may have been a mistake on his part, but you did see the pressure come off of that edge. Uh, here he's going to take it to the quarter. And I hope, let's see if he goes for it here, and let's see what we can get going here. So you see how I've kind of worked that base play, and then at, just at the right time on a crucial third down, I send a zone blitz. That's exactly what you want to be doing with your blitzes this season more than any other season. When they're in pro sets or they're in um, sets that they can potentially run out of, you have to be disciplined to call your inverted cover three or your in or your just base run defense or whatever you want to put there. But oh, Darren Sproles! Oh, Darren Sproles! Oh, but. But then in that right moment, when you know he's going to pass, you have to have the pressure to send at your opponent to get stops. So hopefully you guys saw how that worked. And now we're back on offense, and let's see if we can continue to, to have the very good uh, reads that we had on the first drive. We only made one bad read uh, the entire first drive. Another thing I like to do is uh, reset the play really quickly and then hold X uh, because it gets them to the line of scrimmage faster. Here he's got his nickel package in, uh, and I think that this is a blitz. I'm almost positive that he's blitzing here. So I'm going to motion Lance more across, see if he follows him. You see right there he does it. That's an instant tell. You always go into a trip set. So I'm going to check down to the gun U trips giant slot wheel here. You always go into a trip set every single time. Every single time when he does that. And I think I just messed up my play, but I'm going to have to run it anyway. And there you see the pressure, but I got that quick read over to Jimmy Graham, got the ball out quick. And uh, like I said, if they are going to base a line, you are always going to counter with that trips because it just gives your team an advantage that they, that they don't have. You see, again, another base a line look. This is an instant tell that I'm already going into a trip set. Now this time, because I saw him blitz off the left edge, I'm going to check down to the empty or the uh, shotgun trips tied in if I can find it here. You got so many formations you can get to. So go to the trips tied in. Um, since I don't have time to audible out of this, I'm just going to run this play. And I'm going to motion sprawls over here. And, oh, crap, I got to talk. I tried to call timeout there. Dang it. Uh, that's the only problem with this playbook is that since you have so many three-by-one formations, you have to kind of get used to using it. And since I just this is kind of my first time um, just for this game, I was just using it for this game because I normally use Arizona. Uh, not trying to make excuses, but I, I should have been better. But anyway, here, we're going to run Giants on trail. We get a cover two zone blitz. We pass lead up that slot trail route. And because we have that wheel to the halfback, we're able to spit that in in a very vulnerable position for him. You saw the blitz off the edge. So now what we're going to do is now that we've kind of got a little mentality of what he's trying to do, we're going to bring Lance Moore across the formation. Now we've seen that this is a formation that he likes to blitz out of. So we're going to try to find our empty five wide ATL deep in. And we're going to hit him with that because he's been blitzing. So now we see again, there's the blitz across the middle, and we got Darren Sproles open. Darren Sproles makes a move on the tackler and gets to the edge and gets a huge gain for us on a crucial second down. All right, so you see, hopefully you guys saw what I was trying to show you there. But basically what we saw there is he's sending pressure off that left edge, and since he didn't change his coverage, we felt like we had a pretty nice uh, uh, opportunity there. And there he switches to two men under, and he caught us. And see, that's why you want to switch up. And that's why it's a chess match back and forth. You play off the tendencies. You play off the formations. And you saw there, he's been blitzing out of that formation. We thought we could hit that quick flat. Unfortunately, he was a man coverage, and I threw it just a little bit too early. Now you see he's following my guy over. So now that's an instant tell. Okay, I want to get back into my giant slot trail because he's probably in just a basic two-man under. I'm going to put the out route over there to Colston, and let's see what we've got here. So there's two men under, pass lead to the outside to Marcus Colston, and we get the touchdown. So he saw what happened there. I motioned that receiver across. When he's blitzing, that guy does not follow him. When he isn't blitzing, the guy does follow him. So you're telling, so that's a quick tell that's saying, okay, this guy's not base aligning his defense, so I can take advantage of it. All right, guys, so we're going to go for two just to show you some more reads here. Uh, but basically here what you're seeing is what we're going to do now is we're going to emotionally it's more over with no intent of passing the ball. We're going to check down into our single back bunch once he gets over to that side, and we're going to run the quick pitch. 
if I can find a single back bunch in time. Man, these things take forever to get to. So I'm going to check down to that quick pitch and make sure you're hitting X, 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 X to get the playoff. And my guy did not make a block, but Pierre Thomas, with that high trucking rating, which I talked about in the depth chart, did a very nice job at breaking tackles on the goal line, got us in for two points. So hopefully you guys are seeing how that works. Uh, hope you're seeing why it's important to go through your depth chart, go through your ratings, find guys that can break tackles and make moves on guys and put them in your lineup. There's that tight end I also was talking about uh, putting on the special teams unit. So back to the defense here. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Let me know. Give me some feedback. Uh, is this something that you want to see more of? Is this something that you think is beneficial to you or whatever? But anyway, we're going to hop back into the cover three, and now we're going to start sending the pressure because he has to kind of pass. So we've got the setup in and a draw. So good call by him there. I was kind of playing the pass. And see, that's another reason why you can't get over aggressive with the pressure. You have to kind of let him let let him do his thing so that you can at the right moment send the pressure instead of always sending the pressure like we would in previous years because you could just kind of use or blow up the run. So I didn't get my setup in at all here. And yeah, he's gonna roast me. Dang, that's tough. That's tough. I didn't get my setup in. Got roasted. Can't even car save the day, but that's rough. I was trying to set up my uh, I was trying to set up the base play and then I got bumped off of something and anyway. No excuses. But now I'm gonna start now is where I have to go with my run defense here. I have to stop the run. He's been running that stretch run all game. So here let's see if I can stop it. So three tight ends. And there we are. And there we are. See, see how that worked. Talked about it in the video. That D blue zone does a very nice job at stopping the run. Here he's gonna probably run the same thing. I gotta get down in that A gap. Get the motion over. Counter. Pass. And he got me. Sometimes you gotta give that up. So sometimes you gotta sometimes you have to force them to throw the football. So now, now that we're in, now that that's a tendency that I saw, where if I stop the run on the goal line, he's gonna go to play action and no huddle. Next time, I can audible to my cover three and then have a potential chance of stopping. But you see, I have to have information. I cannot I cannot solely just give you a running play. I have to have information. So I have to give him the same look so that he shows me what he's going to do to counter whatever look I gave him. Here's my kick return. There's Darren Sproles. And there you see the kick return tip. A little plug for that. Uh, but the kick return is still effective. You just have to have that tip that I broke down. And you see once again... That it is possible to break for big returns, and I've gotten a lot of great feedback feedback on that tip. And uh, hopefully, you guys have checked that out. If you haven't checked that out already, I'll leave a link in the description. It's also going to be my trailer introduction video at a kick return with Joe McKnight of all players. Uh, and uh, anywho, sorry about that. I actually got a little excited about that, but that is the kick return tip. So here I see that he follows him over, and here I'm just kind of running uh, just to kind of give him another look. Plus, I know I have the two-minute warning coming up, so might as well run the ball because the clock's going to stop anyway. And I had to give Darren Sproles a little break, so I'm actually going to run it again because at this point in the game, I'm playing to kind of clock here. Because why, am I, why, why would I want to clock here? Well, I want to clock here because... I have a good read on his passing, but I want to go into halftime up two scores because I kicked the ball off at, at the beginning of the game. So now I'm going to get the ball at halftime. So I don't want to risk a turnover. So if I can run the ball every single snap here, uh, I'm going to do that. And, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I, I, have, I have potential here to uh, really do a good job of clock management. Okay, so here I check into this halfback power and just more running probably. This is this is a pretty good run. That halfback power is not as good as the base, but it is decent. Um, now, now what you can see though, watch what's going to happen soon. He's going to start bringing his safeties down when I motion Lance Moore across. If he's if he's smart, if he's trying to stop the run, so then I can check. Then I can have this comeback Z post streak route, the streak route from that play that does a really nice job at beating cover zero. So you see how it all works together; it all fits. So here you see he's a little bit weak on the outside to the right. So I'm gonna run this halfback slash, and uh, Derek Johnson is gonna 
do a really nice job there of, ready, uh, of stopping me. So now, now that Darren Sproles is good and rested up, I can sub him back in and I can get back to passing. Cut. But I did a good job of clock management. So now I have about 45 seconds here. Three timeouts. I have all the time in the world. Uh, here, we're just going to check down Darren Sproles. Look at Dan Sproles, man, getting shifty with it, getting shifty one time for your mind right there. That was pretty. That was pretty nice. Um, pretty nice play by Sproles there. So here I'm gonna check down to this comeback Z post play because he was just in cover two sink and I'm dotting over the middle. I was really hoping I would not get in and I got lucky there. Uh, I didn't end up getting in, so now I can check the clock down. If he was smart, he would be calling timeouts right now, but he, it looks like he's not going to do that. So I'm gonna run this down to about. Uh, to about 10 seconds here, and then I'm going to call a timeout. Because at 10 seconds, I can run the ball three times, call timeout every single time if I don't get in, and I feel confident in my uh, ability to score here. So first things first is call the timeout at 10 seconds. Okay? Then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to run the scheme. So I'm going to – I have all the time in the world because I've called a timeout. The clock's not running. So now I can do the motion over. The strategy is is there, and now I can do a lot of different things. Um, so let's take a look here. He's in that goal line look again. And, again, I really like this look for running the quick pitch out of the single back bunch because the guy on the right is a corner and the guy on the left is a linebacker. I'm definitely going to be running this pitch to the right. So here you see I'm going to check down to the single back bunch quick pitch. I'm going to see what he does, see if he makes any adjustments here. I'm actually going to take Colson, move him outside so that that guy goes with him. Then I'm going to bring him back in two steps, snap, get to the edge here. Pierre Thomas breaks a tackle, gets stopped. Now I call timeout. Now I can throw the ball one time, and then I have to uh, – then if I, don't, if I don't make it in, then I have to kick a field goal. But I'm still going to get a three-score lead going into halftime, and I'm getting the ball back. So you see how that works. Uh, hopefully you guys are seeing why I decided to not be over-aggressive. Uh, so here I'm going to go giant slot truck. He's got a linebacker out there on, a, on the guy here. And there I get lucky, and he's in a cover two. And Kenny Stills makes a very good uh, play over the middle for the score. And with just one second, I don't have to worry about a kick return. So I'm going to hit the squib kick uh, and try to get a – try to just get a tackle and go into halftime up three scores. Or, up, well, I guess I'm technically not up three scores. I'm up two scores. But I get the ball back at halftime, and that's huge. So I don't want to risk that going in. I don't want to risk throwing an interception. I don't really want to risk, uh, you know, hitting my receiver and then fumbling or whatever because I know I'm getting the ball at half. So I'm more on the cautious side there. But hopefully you guys are seeing why I'm saying that and, and why that works and stuff like that because this guy has a decent scheme. But I'm still up because I've been able to execute my scheme and I've also been able to uh, – been able to do a pretty nice job and there you see again that kick return tip gets me to the edge and now Darren Sproles is going to take it back for six. Oh, I didn't get it all the way there but you see what I'm saying about the kick return tip guys I mean this is very evident in this video you need to be using that kick return tip because it gets you to the edge it gives you the opportunity to make huge plays in the kick return game I've broken two kicks already over over 50 yard return average Whereas before, I, I would argue that most people aren't even getting the ball past the 20-yard line. Use that kick return tip. Guys have been telling me, great success with that kick return tip. Check it out. It's going to be in the description of this video um, because it's been a huge success. So check it out here. Again, I really like this look for Giant Slot Trail uh, because he's got a linebacker on Lance Moore. Uh, he's actually in cover two, so I'm going to check down that slot trail route. When it comes back, I get a nice little back juke there and uh, get in a first and goal situation. So now I have uh, here. I want to just check down halfback base and see if I can get the edge because he's not base aligning, so I know it gives me the advantage. Here I'm going to check it upfield and use Pierre Thomas as like I think he has like 96 trucking. Uh, use that to get in the end zone for a quick score uh, to open up the half. All of that was because of the kick return, and I'm telling you guys right now that kick return tip is huge uh, for your offense because it's going to get you in good field position and it's going to give you potential to score quick touchdowns like you just saw. So now we're up three scores. We're going on defense here, and with you know, well, he's still he still has plenty of time, and I'm not saying that, but he is going to probably have to start passing soon. Uh, so I want to see what he does here. And there, I almost got a wicked hit stick with Roman Harper because he has pretty high hit power. That's why I put him in that position uh, for the special teams unit. 
So here he's going to still come out in that pro set. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stay with the cover three invert. Uh, the reason I'm only going to stay with that cover three invert is because I have the feeling that what he's going to try to do is break long runs with that outside run, the strong power. But I still don't have to get in that you know, over attack mode with the rush outside. So I'm going to stay with the basic inverted cover two run defense, but I'm also going to have the ability to still be liable and able to stop the pass. So here you see a lot of strong power. Uh, I need to spread my guys out so they can stop that. Let's see what he does. So here he's going to go to the four verticals. And because I went that inverted cover two because I shaded the coverage down, those guys were able to play those deep streaks. Whereas if I didn't shade that coverage down, that probably would have been a touchdown because I jumped all over the uh, because I jumped all over the uh, post route. So you see that what I why I did what I did there and how that works uh, in the grand scheme of things when we're talking defense. So now he's starting to throw a lot more. And he's going to have to check down. Almost caught that. That would have been really cool if he did. Uh, so now I can vamp up the pressure. And I'm going to send it from a cover four look instead of a cover three. The reason I'm going to do that is because the cover four is going to provide a little better deep coverage than the cover three. It's still all the same pressure. But it's just going to have a little bit different in terms of what's going to be open here. So now I'm going to be using this yellow zone over here. He's actually going to run it here, so that was a bold call. We ran right into the blitz, and you see we were still good because the 46 normal formation has eight guys at the box, which is why another reason we like it. We're going to force a punt here. Uh, a pretty good way to start the half. You know, a quick score, good kick return, force a punt. Now we're in a good situation because now we can go up four scores, and then he's going to have to start passing. Uh, he has been smart to punt because he does know that his game's not over. But if he if he wouldn't have, if he were to not get that first down, um, you know this game might be over. So there's a punt return, uh, guys. I got a punt return tip coming out soon. Uh, we'll talk about what I did there. We'll talk about a little bit more detail. I haven't quite uh, been able to break punts for touchdowns as much, but I have been able to break some punts. So we'll be talking about that uh, next week. But anywho, back to the offense here. He's been in this 3-4 uh, a lot. Uh, here, since there's no one over uh, Lance Moore, watch what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to bring Colston over. See if they follow. You see they don't follow. This is an instant blitz tell. So he's base aligned here. So now I'm going to check into the gun trips tight end. Uh, if I can find it here. Where is it? I need to find it because I'm running out of time. Bubble screen. That's what I'm checking into. And we're going to hit Kenny Stills because there's nobody over there. So might as well just hit that bubble screen. That's why I put it in the audibles um, because there's, there was literally no one over there. So I could easily hit that for a quick route. And that's just something that we're taking advantage of what the defense gives us. Um, I also like the bubble screen out of this formation, this gun normal wing New York. But I didn't have uh, the audible slot to put it in there. So you see here, again, same look. So now we audible to our comeback Z post play, see if he changes the look, see if he follows across. If he doesn't, I'm just going to run the, the – actually, I'm going to have to run this play now. And I love that blue wrap to Darren Sproles out of the backfield if they blitz. You see he's sending heavy pressure. So um, I don't know what happened. I think it's because of the stupid accelerated clock runoff. But that's, that's another reason you go into a huddle a lot is because when you go into a huddle a lot, you have the ability to – uh, actually make a read pre-snap and have some time uh, to make some adjustments. Um, so that's what I like to do there. And again, I really like this bubble screen look. Uh, if he's not going to honor the bubble screen, um, you, you know, there's no reason not to run it. Here I'm going to motion scrolls over, put him on a streak just in case he isn't monitoring it. Uh, and there you see there's the bubble screen. And we're going to get some pretty good yards with Kenny Stills uh, with that nice little back juke angle that we did there. Uh, that's just another thing that can help you run. Uh, it sets up you, you, if you are good with the back juke, you can really set up your running uh, with that. Uh, what he's been doing here uh, is I'm not going to force that bubble screen you know, over and over again. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to check down to the blitz beater because he's been sending heavy, heavy pressure at me uh, because he's trying to get a turnover, I'm assuming. So I'm going to send that, do that, and here we go. And there's a little mesh underneath. Darren Sproles has been killing him over the middle all game long. Six receptions. Um, pretty pretty effective right there. Uh, now, again, we have that look for the bubble screen. So I'm going to send uh, Marcus Colston to motion, see if he follows over. But now what I'm going to do is instead of running the bubble screen, I'm just going to run the play action slot corner play with the corner route. Um, actually, we're just going to run X spot because that's what we actually broke down in the video. Um, so let's see here. Go to X spot. 
And I've got Kenny Stills on that flat route, uh, so it's going to look like he's on a bubble screen route. Bring Sproles over, put him on the streak. Everything looks the same. Now I've got the corner route, and I get picked off because that was a terrible read. I had the flat route wide open, and I forced the corner out. Uh, that's all on me right there. That's just a bad read. Uh, the play was worked. Play worked. Everything worked right. It was my fault, and I take full responsibility for that interception. So now on defense, back on defense, we're going to run. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to send the cover three version of the run defense. And we're trying. We're really trying to get a safety here. We're going to be over aggressive. And the reason we're going to be over aggressive is because he only has one guy. I almost picked that off with Corey Wright because the passing from those formations is just limited. So I'm going to send this guy up, press him, blitz all my linebackers down, and we're watching. We're really watching for the run here. And I'm trying to be over aggressive because of he's because he's so backed up. Okay, he's so backed up here. Ah, oh, good read. He hit Darren Sproles out of the backfield. Keenan Lewis is probably not going to catch him unless he makes a bad cut. So, good read there. That was probably stupid on my part. That was really stupid. Uh, the first, I'm not mad at myself at being over aggressive for the first time on the very first play. But the second play that I was over aggressive on, that was really dumb because there was no reason to be. Uh, he was backed up, but he wasn't backed up enough that if I would have gotten like a sack or uh, you know uh, held him to no gain, that he would have been at risk for getting a safety. So that's all on me right there. Oh no, I messed up my kick return. Dang it, I was really having fun with that. Uh, I messed up my kick return there, guys. Sorry about that. But um, that was just bad by me. That second play was all my fault. And then I I left the I left the running back because. I thought that I had shown him that I would cover the back, and I kind of just let him back in the game because that was just a very bad couple sequences of pet plays here. Here I see that there's no one outside on the out route, so I'm just going to take that and uh, make a quick read. And that's just that's just you know that's just tendencies, that's uh, positioning of the players, and that's what I've been talking about for weeks on this channel. If the DBs are back, the linebacker here looks like he's going to blitz. So now what you're going to see what I'm going to do is I'm checking down. Uh, to my gun trips tight end here. No, I'm not. I'm checking down to the Eagle Age. I'm putting Colson on that out route. Sprawls on the end, and I got to snap it quick. And that was a little too early. I hit I hit Sprawls way too quick, and I had Jimmy Graham wide open. Uh, so there's always ways to improve here. But uh, anyway, here I noticed he was in cover two last time. So I'm going to hit Lance Moore over the top here. Uh, you just kind of get a feel for things. And that's why that comeback see post is really good. Because it gives you a very easy access to four verticals. As well as having that. Uh, as well as having that. Um, whatever they call it. Uh, uh, that deep post right on the, on the right. And that blue route to the back. So that's why it's in the playbook. All right. Uh, fourth quarter coming up here. I, I've got the ball in scoring position. I'm trying to start thinking now clockwise how much time is left in this game, what he's been doing, what he's been hitting me with a lot. He's not going to be able to do that if I don't play stupid defense like I've been playing uh, this, these last couple drives here where I'm playing over aggressive. So, uh, and here I'll just hit the zig because he was in a purple zone. Uh, that's a curl, basic curl flat read. But what I'm seeing now is he's really dropping more guys back in zone coverage. So now it's time to start using the zone beater that we talked about in the video. Uh, the gun trips tied in. So we're going to motion Colston also. Uh, excuse me, motion Colston over. Uh, he actually follows Colston. So now what we can do is we can go to the other uh, beater, the man beater, and work that uh, route progression. And I actually need to re audible to it here. Set it up again. All right, so here's our man beating play. And he's actually in cover two again. So if he's going to keep running the cover two, uh, I think I'm just going to call comeback Z post right here in a clutch situation. Uh, but actually, no, what I'm going to do is I have that in the back of my head. I don't want to overuse the knowledge that he's in cover two. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check down to single back bunch. I'm going to run the halfback slash. I'm going to get the first down. Then once I get the first down, uh, but now what you see here is you see that I can really hit that edge on the left side if I playmaker. So now it's a couple of fake playmakers. He changes out of it. 
Now I have the ability to get outside on the right edge and pick up a quick first down to Darren Sproles. And now I know that he's in cover two, so now I'm going to quick snap uh, this comeback Z post play if I get the same read. Here he's bringing that safety up. Now he's audibly out of it, and now I really like this look for the two verticals on that side. Here I'm just going to check down to Sproles. Didn't like the look over the top there. May have been able to hit it, but I didn't like the look. And now we're now we're kind of back into it, and, and we're probably going to go trips tight end here. Uh, because even though it may not give us any ability to beat the zone because he's going to follow me over, now you see he's in cover zero over the top. So now that's an instant tell. I need to reset the play and just run giant slot trail. And since we're in the, the – uh, 20 yard line and in. We're going to try to throw that fade up to Marcus Colson if all else fails. There he's in cover three. I could pass lead up that route to Moore. Uh, we've talked about that a couple of times before, and uh, I really like that. So now that we're in this situation here, I'm blocking my running back. I'm blocking Jimmy Graham, and I'm going to throw that fade up to Maurice Colson, or excuse me, uh, Colson over there, Marcus Colson. Uh, if he's in man. Here he's in two man under. So I'm going to throw that up. Pass it to the right. And you see that he gets big. Ended up dropping it. But it's worth a shot uh, when you're in that situation. Uh, next time I see that, I'll probably just hit the slot trail route if he's in man. Uh, because when you have that safety over the top, it helps you out a little bit uh, in terms of stopping that. So uh, that's just a little future thing that I can uh, tell myself next time. Uh, so let's see here. Now that he's got the DBs back, I'm definitely throwing that route. So, uh, cover two, I'm going to still do it. And look, see how he gets big? I mean, you, you got a guy with good catch of traffic. You're just saying, okay, let's see if we can make a throw. And fortunately there we did. And we, we probably shouldn't have thrown it there just because last time it didn't work. We probably should have went something else. But I don't know. I kind of felt like I could get it uh, just based off the look he came out in. So he's been running his DBs back and then pressing them, which is weird. Uh, let's see if we can hit the out route here. No, we cannot. But I can hit that route to Kenny Stills, but unfortunately, Kenny Stills did not cut it off like I wanted him to, and I'm going to have to take a field goal. But what also you saw there, I took a lot of time off that drive. I took a lot of time off that drive. He's got about three minutes left to score 17 points. So as long as I don't play stupid defense, I'll be coming out of here with a victory. Okay. So uh, as far as kicking, I like to kick it up to the left to the end a little bit, and then just a little bit of power. Uh, just kind of just a little touch kick there. Just kind of take the ball out of Jamal Charles' hands or whoever he has back there, and then give Roman Harper and those guys opportunities to get hit sticks uh, to try to isolate the ball carrier by getting him the outside instead of keeping him the inside, and then he can go outside. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense uh, to see what if you guys see what I'm trying to do there. Uh, now what you're going to see is basically for the rest of the game, I'm going to be in the zone blitz, man blitz combo. Uh, because he can't, he can't do anything against the zone blitz. Crap! But I messed up the zone blitz. And he's gonna run. And there's Kenny Vaccaro. Uh, okay, so that it's gonna be a lot of that. You're gonna see a lot of that for the rest of the game. Uh, cover three, that zone blitz off the edge in combination with the man blitz, because he has nothing else he can do. He has nothing else that he can do to me that I'm going to feel really worthless against. Um, there's that route, and there we are. And there's, there's again, that's why you've got defensive ends at linebacker, or excuse me, linebackers at defensive ends, so they can drop in coverage um, for this formation. Because you have eight men in the box, and even the, if you count your user player, that's nine guys in the box. And it's very effective, guys, I'm just, I'm just telling you. Oh, boy. i got to call timeout. Uh, if you saw what happened there, I accidentally ran commit and blitzed all my linebackers down, and I would have got roasted. So I needed to call a timeout, unfortunately. I uh, got a little excited, I guess. Probably that stretch run or that counter. If he motions the guy over, I'm expecting the play action play. Let's see what he does here. Passes. I know I got to get deep. That's all I got to watch out for. Quarterback scrambles bottled up because it's a flat zone. And you see how that how good that flat zone does against the quarterback scramble. So now we've got fourth and seven. Uh, in this situation, I'm going to send the two-man under version of the blitz. So baseline and just do everything the same as if you were sending the cover three. But now we're dropping this version. 
And I don't know why we're running the ball on fourth and seven, but he got it. So, <sighs> J.M. Cam, J. Maul Charles. Let's see what this guy doesn't see here is the timing. He, he doesn't have time to be running the ball. So I'm willing to concede that. And that's why I'm not even worrying. That's why I'm not even in inverted cover two. I'm not even in any of that because there's no reason for me to be worried about that because of the timing of the of the time that's left in the game. Even if it comes out in a heavy run formation, you'll see a lot of times that I was right there. I should have got the SWAT. Wow. Oh, it's so frustrating. I was right there on him. Ah, gone. I don't know. I get some. I sometimes get a little over aggressive, uh, as you've seen this game. But if you stay disciplined, uh, you have a lot better chance. So he's probably going to squib kick, or he might kick it deep. I hope he kicks it deep. Yep, yeah, kicks it deep. So let's see if this kick return tip works again. It's been working all game. Swerve him. Oh, he got me that time. I got spun a little bit too early. But now, with 153 left, it's all clock from here. Um, a couple first downs, and this game will be over. But hopefully you guys had an opportunity to see what was in my head, going through my head, and things like that, That I, uh, little subtle things that you see uh, when you're playing. And here, I'm actually going to check down the deep end. The reason I'm going to do that is because I just, I just feel confident. And I, I really like that play a lot. And I just feel like if he's going to send heavy pressure, I'm going to get that dot out to Jimmy Graham. And there's a set, I think it's the second or third time you've seen Jimmy Graham make a play like that where uh, they're in a man blitz. They feel like they got Jimmy Graham covered. But for whatever reason, that route, you can beat the man because his guy will blitz uh, for no reason at all. There's the giant slot trail. And I was going to clock, but I figured, you know, I might as well show you guys some more reads. But basically, if you're in, a, you know, in it to win a game, you clock from this point on. Uh, so, you know, that I'll handle that. But I do want to show you guys more and more of this offense. Show you a lot of giant slot trail. You haven't seen a whole lot of it, uh, but it is a very effective play. I love the back juke for situations like that where they're going to over pursue. And uh, you see how that's effective. Um, you know, I may not be the most sim player. Uh, but I'm also probably not the glitchiest player you've ever seen either. So I try to be, try to be a good mix. But I just try to do what I, what works. You know, I try to do what's effective. Uh, I try to make it applicable. And uh, I hope that that doesn't offend anybody. But if it does, you know, it's just way I play. So uh, I'm telling you guys that empty giant deep end. That's probably one of the best plays in the game. Uh, it's it's really underrated because it's it doesn't seem very good. But when you put routes together. And that's what I've talked about all the time in Concepts of the Week. So if you guys are only watching this gameplay, you need to be watching every video I do. Uh, not just because not just because I you know want to get views and stuff, but realistically, you need to be watching at least one or two of my videos a day. Because what it's going to give you, it's going to give you the context of what I'm trying to teach you in videos like this. Because you're going to have that knowledge. You're going to say, oh, he talked about packaging concepts in Concepts of the Week last week. So then when I say, you know, it's just the way you fit plays together, you know how you now have... A little bit of an understanding of what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say. So that's why it's important for you to get involved in the community. That's why it's important for you to watch videos and not just mine. Watch other men tips, guys. You know, watch watch Master Chappy, watch watch S Gibbs, Z Falls, watch uh, Mad Mastermind. Watch all those guys. They all have something to share, and uh, it's it's all about the community. It's not about the individual. So uh, here, I like this play. It says, "Look." And Fit that into the back. That was dumb. That was dumb. Uh, okay, so uh, just since we're just because we're on the 19 yard line, I'm just gonna go to the split flex just to kind of. Uh, I'm gonna block both running backs and I'm going to throw the ball to Marcus Colston. And I'm gonna bring more, more over so I get another blocker, and that's all I'm gonna do because uh, it's the last play of the game. So just gonna give something cute for the fans. And there you see that fade route gets big. And that's a touchdown for us to close out the game. Hope you guys enjoyed this commentary. If you did, I just ask that you leave a like rating below. I ask that you share it on Twitter and Facebook. And I ask that you just engage with me. Talk to me about the game. Did you see some mistakes I made that I can prove for next time? Did you see some areas where, you know, it's plays that you liked? Let me know what you guys think about the game. Let me know what you guys are, are, are 
engaging with and let me have your feedback because that's the way that I get better is by hearing your guys' feedback. So once again, I really appreciate the opportunity to get on the commentary here, share with you guys the gameplay finally, and I hope that the video works well. I hope that it's a good experience for you guys, and I hope I can keep doing it every week. Thanks for your time today, guys. Once again, uh, leave a like rating below. Share it on Twitter and Facebook. If you're not already a member of the channel, I just ask that you subscribe. It's free to you, and it gets you a lot of video content, gets you a lot of tips. But guys, the information is there. It's up to you to apply it. Thanks for your time today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video.